Hello, I'd like to talk about my favorite feed reader nowadays that I am using and I just cannot get away from it. It just has worked so flawlessly and quickly and it is not what you think it is. It's comma feed, C-O-M-M-A-F-E-E-D. It used to be Fresh RSS was my favorite one and I still love Fresh RSS. That's one of my favorite. That's probably my other favorite self-hosted one. And I've also tried Tiny Tiny RSS but I just keep going back to comma feed. It's so easy to self-host this and it just it just fetches the feeds so quickly. And maybe it's because I don't have a lot of feeds. I don't know. But the more I add to it, I just it just makes it so easy to consume my favorite content and read it quickly without all these ads and going to the website. So let's look at this. We got commafeed.com. This is the welcome page. Let's go to their GitHub page because that's linked on their main page. And you can see that it's an inspired by self-hosted RSS. It's a Google reader inspired <laughs> self-hosted RSS reader. And based on drop wizard and react typescript. I don't know. I'm not a coder, but it runs flawlessly. And I'm going to show you how it runs on my self-hosted instance here in a second. But you can see the different features. It's got different layouts, light and dark theme, fully responsive, uh, keyboard shortcuts for almost everything. I haven't even used the keyboard shortcuts yet. Maybe if I start really just going through articles quickly, I will use those. But I just find myself hitting mark all as red, and then I'm just done. And they're hidden from my view, and I'm done reading them. I just feel like it's so easy to just blow through a bunch of articles and then clear them, you know, mark them as red, and they don't appear again. I just don't have to deal with them. And I feel like in other feed readers, they just keep coming back, even if I hide them from my view. I have to keep hiding them from my view. And I, I don't know, maybe it's just, there's too much. This has very little features <laughs> and it just does its job is, is kind of what I get out of it. So let's go to my self-hosted instance. It is, uh, it's up here somewhere. There it is. All right, let me see if I can get my recording button out of the way. You might not see it, but my screen recorder button was right over top of the web page. So you can see here, I have different categories that I've made. I did local news, alternative news, which I don't have any yet, but it's in case I find maybe a local news that is not like mainstream news, I could use that and put it here. But I obviously have a lot of technology ones. And I have 9 to 5 Linux. It's free and open source software. Uh, OMG Ubuntu. These are all great little sites that I like reading. And uh, Ars Technica, uh, not, not quite a little site. You can see they have a lot of articles that appear all the time. But if I don't feel like reading them all, I just clear them. So let's go to the first category here. We got open source. We got 9 to 5 Linux. I click that. You can see I got some articles. I can click on the first one and I can read it. If I click open link, it's going to take me to the actual article like this. There it is. I close that and go back. And you can see when I'm clicking through these, the number goes down. So it's already marking it as red. Maybe I'm not interested in any of these titles and I just don't want to read them. I just click mark all as red and it will mark that entire category and it will kind of gray it out so you don't have to worry about reading it again. Now I don't have to worry about, you know, coming back to this and reading it. It's just done. So if I go to it's free and open source software, got five articles here. Maybe none of them are interesting to me today. So I'll just mark them all as red done. It's just like really easy way to just check these off and keep going. OMG Ubuntu, we got some articles. Uh, let's maybe I want to read this. It's got the, the image in line like that. Super responsive. I love it. I'm a big fan of this this reader. It's just it's worked so well for me. It's never failed. Yeah, Ubuntu Pit. This is a this is a rather got a, quite a few articles here. So I'm not gonna read any of these today. All is red. So if I want to go to the all category, I can just mark everything as red, and that's all 211 articles. Like for The Verge, a lot of their stuff is just garbage posts, uh, in my opinion. Uh, I don't I don't get a lot of, you know, really um, useful articles out of them. They tend to be political sometimes, and I'm not really into that. Let's go confirm, mark it red. Dyson's new AR feature shows where you have and haven't vacuumed. Um, not a fan of Dyson. I think Mila is the is the best vacuum in the world, in my opinion. <laughs> best uh, brand that's out there that's known, I guess. Ars Technica. Okay, cool. 
there's some there's some good reads in here once in a while, but I, I just haven't caught up in a few days. I want to mark everything as red, and I'm done. Now, if I want to add a feed, I could just go to any of these categories. Like, let's go to local news, and I could go to uh, plus up here, and then I just put in the feed URL. I could put it in the category. I could click it, which one that already exists, or I can make it in another category. And it's so easy. Look how simple this is. It's just like you pop it in here. So you could go to a website such as Ars Technica and look up their feed link. So let's let's do that. Let's go to ArsTechnica.com. And we could go to the bottom of the page. RSS feeds. So you got RSS feeds and they give you all the lists of their feeds. So you would just right click on one of these links and copy it. And then you would post it or paste it into this little feed you're out here. And then, you know, you could just do category, give it a name, go to add, and it's done. It will fetch them immediately. So I hope this video was useful and maybe you want to give this a try. You can look it up and go to their project website like I was showing you earlier. Um, where's it at? <laughs> right here and you can go to the github and then you can look here how you would self-host it this isn't a tutorial on how to self-host it but you can run it on pika pods which i recommend i use pika pods for my randyhanley.com website and you could have this up and running in just a couple minutes it's really it costs you like maybe a dollar a month yeah starting at a dollar a month with five dollar welcome credit you can't go wrong it's so worth it give this a shot trust me